So common of car hijackings become in this country that we've had to find increasingly innovative ways to combat them. But as those measures, including the latest in tracking technology, have evolved, so have the ways to bypass them. And in northern KZN, the result has been a startling twist in the criminal MO. Here's Claire. <laughs> They, they broke the door open. Then the patching. They held us at gunpoint. This may feel like just another home invasion, but it's a home invasion with a twist. This story is about cars. Vehicle theft in South Africa is an epidemic. Relentless, ruthless, and on the rise. Open your car, hey, open your car. On average, 50 vehicles are hijacked every single day across the country. That's 50 cars taken by force every single day across South Africa. The vehicle, the stolen vehicle or hijacked vehicle, is one of the primary enablers of serious Crime. Tinas Oerendal is from the International Association of Auto Theft Investigators. At least a quarter of stolen cars head illegally to neighboring countries. That's billions of rands lost to the black market. It's not only the vehicles. There's also a huge demand for parts, spare parts. Cars cross either through the border post with fraudulent paperwork and possibly a liberal greasing of palms, or more blatantly, through the actual fence. It's an industry and they also mitigate risk. They, they change modus operandi. As technology advances, criminals adapt. Simply stealing a modern car is near impossible with heightened security features and tracking companies on standby. This means criminals don't just need the car and the key, they now need the vehicle owner as well. A trend that has spiked in areas close to borders, particularly in northern KwaZulu-Natal. The reason is to get that vehicle across the border as quickly as possible. And it also prevents the owner then from notifying the authorities. Pierre Conradi heads a local security firm in the region. He says the violence has escalated. In the last week of December, there were three incidents just days apart, all within 20 kilometers from the border. This 40-year-old professional was attacked in his family home by a cross-border syndicate. In the area where we are, when somebody breaks into your property at those early hours of the morning, then you know that all they want is what you parked outside. It's all about supply and demand and meeting your customers' needs. Even with the international black market for luxury vehicles, criminal syndicates are so brazen, they don't steal cars randomly. They steal on order. They steal on demand and they steal on color. They will even steal on what type of rim they want on that side. The vehicles that goes across the border are not, is not the baseline vehicle. It's the expensive vehicles, six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand rand plus vehicles that gets crossed because that is the market on the other side. These gangs come armed and aggressive under the cover of darkness. They tied us up. They demanded guns, money, so yes, we were scared and terrified. Still in pyjamas, he was forced into his SUV with his fiancée, sister and father. As the car sped off, they were numbed by fear as they drove towards the borderline. They were just making phone calls, uh, calling their counterparts, checking if the road is clear. Okay, the, the suspects will use routes like this through these densely forested areas at night. Tom is from a local vehicle recovery ground team. Having worked in the area for close to a decade, he's recovered more than 500 cars. And at night time, they use these forests as cover to get as close to the border as possible. And then they break cover, cross the border, the vehicle's gone. Once the vehicles leave South Africa, the chances of getting the car back diminish significantly. The moment it crosses the border, you start working with different legislation, uh, language barriers, and it's just the legal processes to get it back 
can be very expensive. In some instances, so-called insiders in cross-border syndicates try to extort the vehicle owners. You will get a call saying that your vehicle is recovered and if you pay X amount, they will tell you where it is. But the majority is a scam where the moment you deposit the, vehicle, the money, your informant is gone. There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to cross-border theft. The goal is always the same, get it over the border fast. This is a, a well-organized, well-orchestrated uh, operation. It's run by syndicates with big money behind it. There's a lot of people that's, got a, that's holding a hand. The gunmen get the wheels to the jockeys, who drive on routes that scouts have checked out through the borderline that's been cut by fence cutters. We reached an informant by phone. He's a fence cutter, he works regularly, and even at his level in the syndicate, makes good money. One car, 3,000, no more, 2,000 rand. Uh, a week, maybe three or four. This is the fence that divides South Africa and Mozambique. Now, this fence is not supposed to be a deterrent, just an indication of where the borderline sits. You know, the fence that you have for your own house, it's better than the fence that we have to protect the country between these two countries. We joined Tom on a patrol along the fence. While there was a military presence, there were stretches of unmanned borderline. We just saw some tire tracks going into, well, a freshly built fence, it looks like. Are there people that are crossing the, the border here illegally? At this point in time, we're losing between 12 and 15 vehicles a month wow. through the fence on our route. You could actually just walk up to it and push it over if you wanted to. Wow. Stop the vehicles from crossing. They filled in the We ditch. stopped at a recent They're crossing point. Border. Okay, you can see the vehicle tracks here. There and there. Going over the border where they've come through the ditch. You can still see it on the impressions on the grass over there. This is probably about five, six days ago that this crossed. You can see the SNDF guys are trying to block these vehicles crossing. Because this is so easily removable and they yeah. could just cut the fence again. Correct. Again, fence has been repaired. Cut, yeah. cut. There you go. Literal pieces of the fence. It's hardly a labor-intensive job. The fence is cut and the car crosses over quickly. Victims are taken across as well and dumped on the other side of the fence, a short distance into Mozambique. Usually their freedom comes with a threat of violence. Uh, the promise that those guys made when they released us, don't they try to follow up on this vehicle, otherwise we'll come back and shoot you. So those words to me, they mean death. They made their way to a homestead nearby. In a matter of hours, there had been victims of three contact crimes. A home invasion, held hostage, and their car stolen. Every night you, you, you are living in fear because you don't know what's next. You know, there's a lot that needs to be done. The law enforcement locally, they cannot conquer these things on their own. The local community has stepped in and is getting involved with crime prevention operations. Judah Mtetwa represents the Umhlabuya Lingana Society Against Crime. We don't deny that the government is helping us, but there is no change. Ntetwa comments that while the local police, priority crime investigators, the military and community groups appear to be trying to combat this crime scourge, the positive results are yet to be seen and the local community is frustrated. But to ask yourself, why people are crying? Why people are crying while there are all these structures? And we are failing all of us. This thing is recaring, recaring. No, no, no. Something's fishing. Something's fishing. There is a lot of distrust in law enforcement, and even within the community, Mtatwa admits locals have been roped in by the criminals and are profiting from crime. They leave the school 
and go and cut fence. They think that it is a, a job just to do that, failing to understand that they are torturing their community. It's an easy job, according to the fence cutter. You just need to find a gap in the soldiers' patrols. I spoke Hokkien, my sister, but we would both come up here. When I'm sure, she said, I want to go and cut the other part of my social security business. With the military prisons clearly not enough of a deterrent, an 85 million rand concrete barrier was commissioned in 2020. We saw ditches meant for foundations and material just standing in the fields. But because of the corruption issue, everything's on hold. So how long have these foundations been like this? Oh, you can see this, the, the vegetation growing on them, so that's been there quite a while. The project was stopped in 2021 by the Special Investigating Unit. So do you think if this was running the entire length of the border, it would stop or completely eliminate cross-border vehicle theft? It won't completely eliminate it, but it will be a significant advantage to us. Um, but these guys are clever. They've already found a way to get over. They get over this? That has happened, yeah. How? They construct a ramp and they basically drive the vehicle up the ramp on the one side and off the ramp on the other side. These images were taken in October 2021. While it was an ambitious approach, the car thieves were not successful and set the vehicle alight. It appears the current law enforcement interventions are not working. Conradi believes the region requires a unique solution specific to the area. This is Zululand, it's not Disneyland. So, you know, it's frustrating for us because something can be done about it. We've got the equipment, we've got the technology to assist in fighting this crime. I just think the coordinated effect, uh, effort is not there. But until then, South Africans will continue to be preyed on by callous criminals who feed the lucrative cross-border market. And it's not the first time happening to me and it's not the last time I know. If, if it still carries on like this, with that kind of fence, with this kind of um, law enforcement, it's, it's, it's gonna go on. It's gonna go on and on and on and on. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.